welcome to today's webinar uh, about increasing efficiency of volume calculation with drones. So my name is Simon Grandin and I'm the sp uh, Photogrammetric Workflow Specialist here at Semactiv. So today the topic um, of my webinar will be how you can increase the volumetric calculation with your drone project. So uh, to kick things off, uh, what you will learn uh, during today's webinar, uh, basically we'll start about understanding the requirements for accurate measurements. So how your project configuration can influence uh, the overall accuracy of your volumetric calculation, what are the input data you need. Uh, then we'll talk about how you can uh, perform volumetric calculation in Correlator 3D. So we'll review the different options that you have. Uh, we'll also talk a bit about how you can use script if you want to batch process uh, some 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 calculation. We'll also uh, talking about how you can scale up your your volumetric calculation. So if you have many stockpiles to calculate, how you can uh, you can uh, get the volume of each stockpiles. Uh, we'll also talk about how you can calculate the volume change over time. Uh, so let's say you have two drone flight, one in the one in the beginning of summer, one after the one at the end of the summer. How you can compare those those changes, and finally we'll start we'll finish uh, this webinar by talking about the correlator 3D benefits and also uh, by having a, a question session. So if you have any question during this presentation, feel free to write them uh, in the chat box. Uh, and we'll try as much as possible to answer them at the end of this presentation. So let's start by the most important part. So understanding the requirements for precise measurements uh, for your drone project. Uh, so first of all, uh, when you when you want to perform a volumetric calculation with drone project, there's many things to consider uh, prior to um, prior to start uh, processing your data. So first of all, uh, when you're gonna when you're gonna define your, um, your 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 mission, when you're gonna acquire your images, you need to make sure that you have sufficient overlap for um, for your uh, for your drone project. So typically for a uh, drone project, we suggest having 70% front overlap and 50% side overlap. This is the minimum requirement we 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 suggest for uh, for for drone project, you can you can raise this overlap to probably 80% uh, front lap, 60% side lap. Uh, this will uh, this will give you more redundancy in your um, in your project, and sometimes depending on the texture of, of uh, and the content of the images you're trying to tie together, it will help for the for the the, the reconstruction, which I will talk a bit later in this presentation. Um, again, you want to have uh, also a, a good a, a good flying altitude, uh, which will give you your um, your corresponding ground sample distance that you need for your uh, for your um, for your drone project. Uh, also, the the ground sample distance is basically the the best uh, the best uh, accuracy you can get for your uh, for your drone project, which uh, leads me. Uh, to talk about the difference between the relative and the absolute accuracy. Sometimes those two concepts can be uh, can be confusing for 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 some for some uh, for for some person. So let's try to 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 differentiate differentiate uh, one one and the other one. So what is the relative accuracy? So basically, uh, the relative accuracy is how well your project is reconstru reconstruct together. So how well your images are tied together. Uh, and this really uh, is influenced by the uh, overlap of your images, the lens that you will use for your project, uh, the flying altitude. So this is why we suggest have at least 70% uh, front lap and 50% side lap, uh, which will give a lot of redundancy between uh, between the images and will be able to tie uh, the to tie the image together. Also, the relative accuracy basically refers to uh, how well you can measure maybe one point to the other one in your in your map. So it's everything that is related one to the other one. Um, for the absolute accuracy is when you compare two different uh, ground sources. So let's say you want to integrate your your drone your your, your drone uh, outputs uh, into a GIS software and bringing exterior uh, da data such as a shape file, or you want to compare maybe the different data sets. 
So the absolute uh, accuracy is how well your project is tied to the tr to the, the real world uh, coordinates. Typically, this is achieved either by having uh, either an RTK or a PPK system for your drone project, uh, which will give you a precise coordinates for each image, or by using ground control points and checkpoints for your processing. So this will tie your project to your um, to real world coordinates. So if you compare your 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 project uh, for uh, with other ones, well. Uh, you should need ground control point at least to have a good absolute accuracy. Um, again, uh, the, the the checkpoint and the and the ground control points. Basically, the difference between one and the other one is the ground control point is used during the bundle adjustment to to tie uh, the project to the to, to the real world uh, coordinates, and the checkpoints are only there to validate the overall accuracy. So sometimes when you have a lot of ground control points, or at least a few of them, you maybe want to split out uh, maybe 80, 20, or 70, 30, uh, the, the, the GCPs and checkpoints, so you have at least uh, a real a real sources to validate uh, the accuracy of your project. Because at the end, it's really the checkpoint that will give you the, the absolute accuracy of your project. Um, and so, when you're gonna produce your your out your your your, your mapping product is really at the aerial triangulation part, which is the first uh, the first uh, steps of your project, where we where you're gonna reach or you're gonna you're gonna tie all your project together, and you'll be able to see what kind of accuracy you can expect for the rest of your outputs. So uh, once your aerial triangulation is done. Uh, we suggest to uh, analyze the quality report, uh, basically as we have here. You want to you want to really analyze the the first page with with which is going to give you a, a a good overview of your project. So the image tie point uh, analysis is basically the relative accuracy of your project. So how well your project is reconstructed together. So here we have uh, an excellent quality assessment, which means that we were able to sufficient to uh, successfully tie the image together. Uh, we have also the numbers of tie points per image, which gives um, uh, an idea of the of the uh, of the redundancy that you that you have. So, if you have higher overlap, well, you're gonna have probably higher tie points, higher numbers of tie points, and also you'll reduce the occlusion in your in your project. So you'll you'll have more areas uh, with with more than one point of view. If you validate here, the ground control points and the checkpoint is really there to validate the absolute accuracy of your project. So how well your project is tied to the real world coordinates. Um, so here we have uh, we had we had seven uh, ground control points at least. So we had at least use one of them to validate uh, the, as checkpoints to validate the absolute accuracy um, as a checkpoint. Um, so now let's talk about uh, the volumetric calculation in correlator 3D. So how you can uh, calculate or you can provide uh, volumetric calculation within correlator 3D. So there's basically two ways of of producing your 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 volumes. The first one would be uh, by by going uh, into the graphical user interface. Um, and uh, the second one will be uh, from script. So if you want to use, um, if you want to use, uh, let's say, a script to launch and command prompt. Uh, so those are the two two ways you can produce uh, such volumes. We'll also uh, we'll also talk about those um, th those two ways of processing later in this presentation. Um, also, what are the requirements to perform the volumetric measurements? So basically, you need at least three. Uh, two features. The third one, which is optional, but the first one is you need a digital surface model uh, to calculate your volumes. Then uh, you need either a shapefile or the DGN file, which represent the features that you want to, that you want to measure. So you need a, some sort of a polygon that that will um, that will uh, that will correspond to the area you want to to measure the volume. 
this can be also drawn directly for from correlator 3D. So let's say if you want to perform your volumetric calculation, you can perform the AT, then derive your surface model, and then draw your, uh, your, your shape file directly from correlator 3D and extract the volumes for those areas. And finally, the last thing you, you, you need, but it's, it's still optional, if you want to compare volume, volume over time, uh, let's say between, uh, between day one and day two, well, you need two sources of, uh, of uh, elevation. So you, you'll need the reference sources, which, which will be your, your, your surface model at date one, and you'll need uh, another elevation model, which will be your sources at date two. And then we'll be able to compare uh, for, for between both, be, between both uh, sources. And then at the end, uh, basically, we'll have um, we'll have some sort of uh, of um, of statistics that will be displayed for you, and you'll be able to um, to 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 work with with uh, with those um, with with those statistics. So basically, when we perform volumetric calculation, we'll, we we give uh, basically five different statistics. So we we'll give the volume cut, the volume fill, the terrain area, the orthogonal area, and the volume coverage. Um, so the, the volume cut is what ev it's everything that is above the, the ground reference. The fill is basically uh, what is sometimes below the reference, uh, the reference elevation that you have. Uh, so the, the, the total volume is basically um, the, the, the total of the, of those two um, also the terrain area is uh, is the area that represents the, the the surface of your stockpile and the orthogonal area is basically the one that represents uh, without the terrain like without the the terrain uh, the, the terrain uh, deformation so it's normal that one is bigger than the other one and finally the volume coverage is basically how how well your uh, your your shape file is covered um, by by elevation surface. So let's say if your if your shape file was going a bit out of out of range here, well our volume coverage would be probably below uh, below one hundred. But since here our our coverage is 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 hundred percent of our, our shape file, well we have a volume a volume coverage of hundred percent. So now uh, there's also different options uh, when you're going to perform volumetric calculation in correlator 3D. Uh, and all of those will, will some sort affect the, uh, the, the volume metric that you will have at the end, uh, at, at the end of, um, of, this, uh, of this, uh, this process. So, um, so basically the, um, the the interpolate them at, at the at the selected boundary is when you're going to draw the polygon in uh, in co in correlator 3d we'll use uh, the borders of the polygons to draw uh, to to extract the elevation and we'll use this as the reference to calculate to calculate the volumes um interpolate polygons elevation so let's say um you want to you have already Pre, uh, you have already shape files uh, pre predetermined, um, and each vertices of those shape file has an elevation attribute. So we can use this elevation attributes and 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 uh, to 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 do the reference uh, the reference elevation when we get, when we're gonna calculate the volume. So let's say if um, if you're if you're you're calculating a volume near near a bin, and you ha you have uh, you have elevation for let's say for for the, the the bottom of the of the bin well it's a good thing to use to use them as your um, as your your uh, your volume should be a bit more precise than if if you're using sometimes just the the, the dem the, the dem uh, elevation um, the other two would be uh, to remove or to add a constant offset to the to the reference elevation and finally, the last one is if you want to compare volumes over time, well, you can use a specific reference them. Um, so let's say here would be my time one, and I would calculate my volume out of my time two, and I will at the end I will have um, I would have the difference between those two. So now I've talked a lot about the different options that we have. 
and how they can affect um, the, the overall volume calculation from your drone project. But let's see how we can transpose uh, in Correlator 3D, and I'll show you a bit of the software uh, for those of you that are not too familiar with Correlator 3D. So here we have a small drone project in uh, our software, Correlator 3D. So first of all, the software is kind of a modular architecture. So we have, uh, we have uh, three big modules uh, that are uh, in a sequential order. So the first module is uh, the aerial triangulation, where all the uh, accuracy assessment um, of your project uh, is, uh, is done. Uh, it's there that we can extract features between the images, uh, which are the little white lines. You can also, at that step, incorporate your ground control points and and uh, and, um, and and refine the absolute accuracy of your of your drone project, which are those little triangles here. And it's also at that step that we provide the quality report of the accuracy of your of your project. So again, the aerial triangulation part is a key part in every photogrammetric project not only for for volumetric calculation but if you want to if you want to perform uh, change detection you want to only generate uh, elevation data or at least uh, ortho mosaic well the AT part is a is a critical part in the photogrammetry project then uh, we have our second module which is uh, where we can derive uh, surface data and terrain data so we have we have Algorithm that can that, that can uh, derive, as we have here, a uh, surface uh, model with a uh, point cloud. But we also have algorithm that can uh, that can uh, extract terrain data, so we we can remove non ground features from our surface data, uh, such as buildings, cars, trees, and all those other elements. Um, also, uh, our third module is basically the ortho rectification and the mosaic creation so basically this is where we um this is where we ortho rectified each image so we correct for the the lens deformation the topographic deformation and uh, we can take all those image and and generate a seamless mosaic uh, where you can you can you can do some mapping on it but for uh, for volumetric calculation, you don't necessarily need the, the mosaic creation. You, you don't need the mosaic, so you can stop your workflow at the surface at the surface uh, creation, which is where you, where what we need to extract the volume. So uh, in this case here, I would have a, a surface model, and I would like to um, I would like to calculate the volume. Uh, out uh, out of those out of those piles, so uh, I can I can use the volumetric calculation, and then use those those stockpiles to calculate uh, to calculate their, their volume. So I have uh, I have pre drawn a shape file here in, in our uh, uh, DM editing module, and I will use those shape file to uh, to uh, extract their, their, their the volume of the stockpiles. Also, uh, I talked before. There's another way of processing uh, of processing uh, volume in Correlator 3D, which uh, leads me to talk about the script. So the software is uh, we have a GUI for the software, but everything you see, or mostly everything you see in the graphical user interface, can be run as a script, um, and it's also true for the volumetric calculation. So you can build uh, a script where uh, all you need to have is basically the input DM you want to use for the for the, the volumetric calculation. Here you have the input area, so uh, with, which is your, your stockpiles, uh, you, and then you have the, um, the, the reference elevation you want to use, which is the option I've talked, I've talked before. Uh, and then uh, you have the output files, which is um, which is a, a text file when, when we're going to report all the different volumes of your stockpiles. Um, those scripts uh, also, if you're not sure about the the, the different uh, the different option you have for for the reference type, uh, you can refer to the page ninety to our user manual, which we have all the different options for um, for, uh, for for the script. Um, 
the script can be launched from either the GUI or they can be launched from the Windows command prompt. So you can call Correlator 3D as a command prompt and then call your script. And at the end, you'll have your, your TXT file uh, with your volume done. So that's a bit for a more advanced user, but it's something uh, that we offer with our, with our software. So if you want to run scripts uh, from the graphical user interface, uh, you can go uh, into file, uh, into file, uh, to file, run script, and then you can select the script. However, if you're not sure how you can, how to start your, your scripting, uh, your scripting mode, you can always use uh, our automated workflow, which is a, a pre, it's a predefined profile um, where you can select what type of, uh, of, of settings you want to have for your project. And uh, it's gonna, it's gonna run, it's gonna run all the steps one after the other one. Uh, but you can use this automated workflow to generate some script. So I can just check here that it'll generate script. I can click on process. And at the end, I have a script, a pre-built script, um, which I can use uh, for, 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 my, for, for my project. Uh, also, uh, into the sample file folder uh, of our installation folder, we provide, uh, here we provide some, uh, some script uh, here, some SPT file, which can, which can be opened into a, a, a notepad, uh, a, no, a notepad, a, a notepad here. And I have uh, basically all the, all the, the, the different uh, module that can be called from a script. So it can be useful uh, to start scripting also uh, with this, uh, with this uh, master script file. So now let's jump into a bit more the practical, um, the practical uh, side of, uh, of of calculating volumes in correlator trading. So the first, uh, probably the first um, option or the the the, the easiest, uh, I would say, case would be uh, if you have only one stockpile and you want to measure the stockpile, uh, the volume of this stockpile. So uh, from the software. Uh, you would need to run the error triangulation, extract your surface model. Optionally, if you want to have a better visual, uh, a, a better visual content for your uh, for your your mosaic, uh, I would uh, I, I would run I, I would run the mosaic, and, and it would it would be easier for me to draw the shape file from uh, from from the software. So let's say here I would have uh, my surface model. I would I would not have any vector because nothing was drawn yet, um, and then I would have my mosaic here. So let's say I would I would like to know the the, the volume of the of the of the the stockpile in the middle. I would go into the volumetric calculation module, and then I can draw here a polygon quickly like this. So I can I can draw a polygon from the mosaic here like this. So quickly. And then, once this is done, I can uh, I can either save this uh, this polygon for if I want to re re reuse it later. And then I can perform uh, I can so I can save it, and then I can perform the volume calculation. So here in this case, I would like to use let's say the ground reference uh, as the, the the border of of my of my shape file. Uh, so I would I would click on process, and I would have here. Let's say one total, so I would have the volume cut, the volume fill, the terrain area of, of this stockpile. So I would have all, all those statistics here of, uh, of this stockpile. Uh, also, the, the, since we need a surface model, it's going to be the surface model that is selected in your project tree uh, that will be used for the volumetric calculation. Um, also, this uh, this this uh, text file can uh, this text file can be saved and then reused later, uh, and then reused later. So I can, let's say I would have I would fly the same stockpile months after months after months. Well, what I would do is I I could I could reuse this the, the same the same shape file every month uh, if I have a good absolute accuracy between my drone project, and then I would be able to have the to have volumes uh, for, for the same stockpile every month. Uh, 
So that would be the probably the first the first scenario, um, the first scenario. The second one, which is I think the more um, the more common one, is uh, I'm flying a, I'm flying a site where I have probably uh, more more uh, than one stockpile. Well, I would like to have at least the total volume of my stockpile, but um, but I would also like to have individual volumes for each of those uh, for each of those um, for, for those volumes. For those stockpiles, sorry. So what I could do is uh, basically I could I can draw I could draw uh, all the polygons that I need um, within the same the same shape file. So I can I can draw them here. I would have uh, I would have uh, one in the middle. I would have the, the small one here uh, and all those and all the other ones, which uh, would look something like this, which I have a, a pre-drawn uh, shape file already. So I would like to have the, the, all the volumes of those of those uh, of those stockpiles uh, individually, but also the total of one of them. Um, so then, what I could do is I can bring in pre-existing shape file, or I can draw all the all all the polygons, and then uh, during the, the 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 measure volume tool, I would um, I would use. Probably here the the same option, so the interpolate them at the polygon boundary, and then once I click on process, well, I would have for each polygon, I would have all the different, uh, all the different volume, uh, all the different um, volumes, cut and fill, and I would have at the end the total of all of, of all my my uh, my polygons. Uh, again, if you're not sure of um, the 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 polygon number here is basically the ID we give to the uh, to the polygon. So if if I go here and let's say I I select here, I have uh, ID zero, which is the, the polygon zero, and then I would have a different ID. So it's 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 how you can you can uh, manage which stockpiles belong with which volumes. So that would probably be the mo the 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 most uh, the most uh, Part uh, the most uh, I would say recurrent uh, workflow uh, people will use for volumetric calculation. Um, again, uh, this can also be done with script. It can be a bit more challenging with script, but uh, you could have let's say here uh, if if you would have if if you would like to have uh, maybe. You have three different dates, and you want to know the the you want to know uh, the volumes at those three different dates. Uh, you could have you could have uh, a script, uh, which would be basically three three times the 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 the, the volumetric calculation um, tools, and each of those uh, each of those sections will have a different a different surface model. But would would have the same shape file, and then this will allow you to have a three text report at the end, um, at the end with those three different dates. So that that would be another way uh, another way of of uh, of, press, of of doing it with script. But uh, if all your projects are, are already flown and you already have everything, I suggest running it with, to the graphical user interface. It's much more user friendly and easier for for uh, for, for the user, and you can bring here in in the in the in the DM section. You can bring all the all the DMs that you want and perform those volumetric within uh, within uh, the um, within the the, the the software. So that's a pretty useful uh, tools to, for every everyday uh, everyday work. And finally, probably the, the the another case study or another case of scenario would be volume change over time. So uh, how how you can assess the, the changes between date one and date two. So this here um, is a bit more tricky, but again, there's a few things to consider when you when you're having this case of scenario. Uh, the the first thing is well, you need two flights. Uh, the first one, let's say I, I would have an example, one at the beginning of the summer and one at the end of the summer. Uh, 
and you want to know the changes between uh, the, first, the, the beginning and the end. So you know how many uh, how many uh, volumes were added or removed um, or removed. Uh, so the final measure will be the difference between date one and date two, which is what we want. But in this case, when we compare different data sets, the absolute accuracy is critical because basically we're, we're comparing uh, we're comparing let's say two drone project that was flown probably with the same drone, but uh, the accuracy of the GPS always differ from 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 flight to flight. So we need we need at least uh, we need at least the, the 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 certitude that our project are 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 ab or have a good absolute accuracy. So they're they're probably well tied on ground control points, uh, or at least if you don't have ground control points, uh, what you can do is you can perform your flight one. Then uh, when you're gonna process your your flight number two, you can use the output of the flight number one as a ground reference. So you can use uh, you, you can use let's say the surface model of and the mosaic of of the first flight. And then uh, from this output, you can uh, you can you can use you can tag some ground control points uh, in your new project from the first project, and then this will ensure that your you, at least both data set uh, should be well aligned uh, one after the other one. So you can either do this or use ground control points for both project. Uh, and then uh, if you wanna let's say if you wanna compare. Uh, if you want to compare both dates, what you will do is you will select the 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 the, the flight number two, so the end of the flight, uh, and you will go back into the volumetric uh, the volumetric um, calculation uh, module. You will uh, either draw your shape file or bring in already a, an extra an external um, polygon. And then here you're gonna derive, uh, you're gonna use the reference dem option, and this uh, will allow you. Uh, I'm just gonna, and this will allow you to uh, select. Let's say here I have a, a time one, which is basically the beginning of the summer, where I had uh, no, I had no, uh, no stockpiles yet. And then if I click on process, well, here I have basically the amount of uh, of, of volumes that were added on top uh, of my time one. So I can I can quickly see the difference, uh, the difference. Also, one thing I haven't mentioned probably at the beginning of, the, of this presentation is the unit that you have is related to the projection system of your project. So let's say uh, you're working uh, into a UTM system, which is the most common uh, coordinate system in the world. Uh, the, the unit that they use is meter. So at the end, uh, your surface uh, will probably be in square in, in square meters and uh, or uh, or other, and your volume will be uh, cube meters. If uh, you're working in uh, in 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 the U.S. feet uh, projection system, well, the unit will be accorded uh, according to this uh, to this um, to this unit. So. It's 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 really at the uh, depending on where on where you are that will define the units that will, will provide for the volumetric uh, for the volumetric calculation. Um, so that's uh, probably a, a good overview of how you can manage different uh, di different volumes uh, within within Correlator 3D. Uh, so it's you you'll see it's. Pretty user friendly to 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 derive your uh, your 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 volume, and all those uh, outputs can be also uh, bring in into a GIS software if you want to have if you want to visualize uh, stuff. And also, as I as I mentioned before, uh, it's it it can be useful to 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 do the whole workflow and then derive your volumes since the mosaic sometimes is uh, it's easier to 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 draw in, uh, because it's. It's it's easier to 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 visualize what we have uh, what we have on on the ground. So again, here just a few thoughts on Correlator 3D and their unique benefits that it could have uh, for you for for your project. Uh, so again, Correlator 3D has unmatched processing speed. So we're we're um, 
we're we're constantly working on on improving the speed of our of, of our software and you will be glad to hear that in our next version which will uh, be uh, correlator 3d version 9 uh, we will launch uh, the parallel distributed uh, options so you can use uh, multiple computers uh, to run a, a, a single project so it will greatly reduce the time of processing um, so we have also different options of um, of of uh, of processing data and uh, no training is required because we have the automated workflow but we also have the, the full the full capacity of of playing with the parameters and, and set what you want uh unlimited numbers of images can be processed pro on, on a single standard pc even for a larger data set so you don't you don't have to break down your project into smaller section uh, and then the the, the project uh, the, the software can be installed on a cloud instance such as AWS or Azure instance, uh, and everything can be run from command line, so it can be uh, easily scriptable and um, and can be used as a big production tools. Also, we offer different types of um, of licensing. So we offer a monthly, yearly, or permanent license four different types of sensors so we have uav sensors medium format sensors uh, full full format sensors and also satellite uh, licenses we offer options of uh, node lock or floating license depending on your needs and also we offer free pr processing for marketing purposes uh, at sales at semactive.com uh, and uh, you can download a free trial of our software correlator 3d at www.semactive.com uh, so if you want to start working out with the software, it's a great place to go. Um, so now let's let's have a few questions. Uh, let's answer a few questions that we have during uh, this presentation. Um, so uh, the first que question that we have is um, how can I different how can I differentiate ground control points and checkpoints within my correlator 3D project? So that's quite easy to do. So when you're going to process uh, the AT of your project in the aerial triangulation uh, module, you'll have the choice uh, in your project tree to select the ground co the, the GCPs here, select the little the little pencil button, and you can select what type you want to give to your uh, to your ground control points. So you can you can give. Uh, a vertical, a, a planimetric uh, GCPs, uh, 3D GCPs, or even the checkpoints. Uh, so on the screen, basically the checkpoints are um, are shown as uh, as little triangles. Uh, sorry, the GCPs are shown as triangles, and the checkpoints are shown as double triangles. So that's the way we can differentiate uh, checkpoints versus um, versus uh, versus uh, ground control points. The other question that we had is, um, how come uh, how come having too much overlap uh, basically reduce uh, the accuracy of your project? So at the beginning of this presentation, I I talked about uh, having a proper overlap. So we suggest at least. 50% uh, side lap, 70% front lap. You can raise this to probably 60% side lap, 80% front lap, but you don't want to go too much higher than that because what it does, it, it reduces uh, the, the base height ratio, so the distance between two images. And by doing this, your, uh, your vertical uncertainty of your project uh, greatly increase. So, uh, so this is why you don't want to have above 90 percent of uh of of overlap for for, for different uh, for different project so i would say 80 percent uh front lap is a, is a good number 80 80 percent uh, that's probably the maximum you should aim for for drone project uh, also uh well the altitude at, at 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 which you're flying will have an impact on uh the, the reconstruction so let's say if you're flying higher uh, well, you'll have to trigger a bit less because you're covering more ground with one images. As if you're flying really low, uh, below uh, above ground, well, uh, you should you should trigger the camera more often because 
uh, you cover less ground with, with one image. So I always suggest flying a bit higher than flying uh, lower, uh, than flying lower. And then um, finally, the, the, the last question that we had uh, for, th for this presentation is, uh, how come when I run the AT, I still get uh, red dots? So basically, as I said, the AT is done into two parts. So the first part is where we extract the tie points between, uh, between the image. Uh, so I can, we can review here uh, the different links between the image. And uh, once we've extracted the tie points, so that means that no any ad or any adjustment has been done yet on the the sensor information or either the the camera position. So it's normal that after the initial step, you'll get some red dots, which means that the position of each camera was not optimized yet. Once you will run the bundle adjustment, which is uh, after you can incorporate your ground control points. Uh, you can use the settings probably as default if for, for a normal UAV project. So full AT unconstrained, the sensor to unconstrained, and the ground, the ground reference to ground control point if you have some. Other, otherwise, it will be at no ground reference. But then once the, the, the bundle adjustment is done, is where we optimize the, the sensor information, the camera position, and then you should, uh, you should, you should see uh, green dots, which means that the final solution that we found for the for the whole project, well, was uh, was uh, was sufficient uh, was was sufficient. Um, so, uh, also one question that we have uh, is: um, in addition to drone images, have they tested the software with other types of images? For example, conventional aircraft. Uh, such metric camera, Vexel or, or UltraCam. So you'll be glad to, to hear that the software was first based to process uh, larger images. So, uh, so, so from from air for man aircraft. Uh, so so DMC UltraCam cameras, and then we adapted this software to smaller images uh, to smaller images uh, at, with drone uh, for for drone data. So if you have larger images, uh, well, we're, we, we're glad to say that we're able to process all type of sensors uh, and you'll, you'll probably get, get, gonna get a good mapping results uh, with, with really high-end cameras. Um, so again, uh, everyone, uh, that was all the question we, have, uh, we had for, for, for today. So uh, thank you very much for your time and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you very much, and again, bye-bye.